What's up guys, my name is Julian, and today I unfortunately was forced to make a video on why Peter Zihan is wrong about solar. I just want to preface this video saying that Peter Zihan is one of the smartest YouTubers that I know. I've been listening to him for a few years now, and I'm amazed at his depth of knowledge when it comes to geopolitics. But unfortunately, I believe he's crossing over the line into a territory that he's not very familiar with uh, when it comes to solar specifically. And what I fear is that with having such a large audience that he does, if he just starts talking about topics that he doesn't really understand, that message is going out to hundreds of thousands and potentially millions of people, and they can quickly just believe basically what he's saying without really questioning if his numbers and figures and logic is even accurate. And so I try to stay up to date on all the different solar videos that everyone's making on the internet, and a large percentage of them are getting into, like I said, a territory that they're not really knowledgeable about. So today I'm gonna focus on Peter Zihan's video about why solar doesn't make sense. And the main point that we need to talk about is the part of the video when Peter Zihan is talking about uh, that means that my panels, if you were to put them in New York, only generate about a quarter of the power that they generate for me. You put that in Toronto, you're down to one-fifth. You put it in Berlin, down to one-sixth. He's talking about how Denver, for example, is the sunniest city in America, and solar there makes a lot of sense. But unfortunately, if you're in places like New York um, or Chicago or Toronto, he uses a couple of cities in particular that he basically says, you would need four to five times the solar panels to produce the same amount of power as if you are in Denver. And when I initially heard this, I was shocked that he couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, what I did was, uh, first we're gonna play the snippets of the video where he's talking about this, and then I'm gonna show you on the Onroll Solar Calculator online, which is at the end of the day, the best resource if you are not working with an actual solar proposal software, to come up with an idea of how much solar power a system in your city could potentially create. So let's play the part of the video where Peter Zihan is talking about how solar doesn't make sense when you are north of a certain latitude. Hey everybody, hello from Colorado, Peter Zion here. Uh, today I wanted to talk about solar since it's a sunny day. Uh, I am green, but I'm a green who can do math, so I don't get invited to really any of the green parties. Uh, solar is great if you know you, if you have one of those, a sun. Uh, not just you have to have one for your planet, you have to be able to see it regularly. Solar intensity around the world varies by an order of magnitude based on where you are. And if your goal is to both generate a meaningful amount of electricity and reduce your carbon footprint, there are only a handful of places where today's solar technology really work well. Now, I live in one of them. Denver is the sunniest city in the United States. And people are like, oh, shouldn't that be Phoenix or Dallas? No, because there's more things that go in there than temperature, uh, humidity, air density, wind patterns, weather patterns. There just aren't very many places in the world that have a really good solar quotient. And in the United States, you're pretty much talking about uh, the California coastline into Southern California and then into the desert Southwest. And there's this little hook up the east side of the Front Range, which is where I live. Uh, that means that my panels, if you were to put them in New York, only generate about a quarter of the power that they generate for me. You put that in Toronto, you're down to one-fifth. You put it in Berlin, down to one-sixth. Uh, which brings us to a second problem. I live in a rural area, so I've got a big roof line, and I have an 11.5 kilowatt solar system, which is about the maximum that Colorado allows when you're going to do a feed-in tariff, which is a fancy way of saying that you pay into the grid with electricity the same rate that they charge you to get it out. It's a great system we've got here in rural Colorado. Uh, most cities don't have that option. Uh, number one, you're going to have, going to have a more profit-driven electrical system. I work with a co-op. So there were definitely several things that Peter said in his video that weren't exactly accurate, but I don't want to even talk about all of the little nuanced inaccuracies that he said. My main goal here is to talk about the big claim that he's totally wrong on, which is when you are not in a place like Southern California or Florida or Denver, like he says are basically the best places for solar, it just doesn't make sense and the production that you get just can never justify installing. And this is where he's really wrong because I install solar systems all over the United States and ultimately 
this is just simply not true. So for the sake of this example, I went on to Onreal, which is the uh, leading solar calculator. Now, obviously every home is going to need to be designed with its own unique factors, the pitch, the azimuth, the shading factor. These are definitely things that we need to take into account. So this solar calculator isn't the end all be all for what your home could necessarily produce, but it gives us a good idea with how much potential solar energy in that city uh, could result in terms of kilowatt hour production for a system. So what I did was I went to every individual city that he listed in his video where he said solar just will not produce enough power in order to make sense and I came up with some real numbers for you so you can understand how much more potential energy you could produce if you were you know, in Arizona versus New York or Chicago or Toronto, for example. Now, obviously it's true that if you are in New York, your system is not going to produce as many kilowatt hours as if you're in Phoenix, Arizona, clearly. But to say that it's gonna be a fourth or a fifth as much, I fear with his audience being as big as it is, he's gonna turn a lot of people off before they even want to look into it. And with all of the incentives in place, a lot of these Northeastern states, they have one-to-one -one net metering. Some of them have state tax credits. A lot of them have SREX, which is basically money that you're gonna be paid over time through the state. And all of these Northeastern states that I just made a video on uh, about two months ago have under a 10 year payback period, which is an incredible investment. And so what I, like I said, what I fear is that someone sitting in New York without really you know, doing much research on solar is gonna watch the Peter's Ihan video and then basically just write solar off completely and uh, never look into it and lose out on what could be an amazing opportunity because like I said, in every one of these states, literally you have an under 10 year payback period and some of them are even closer to five. But if you take the system size, the kilowatt DC system size, let's say it's a 10 kilowatt system or 10,000 watts, if you basically multiply that from somewhere between 1.5 to 1.7, you'll get approximately, uh, assuming you have good solar exposure on your roof, you'll get very close to what the kilowatt hour production annually is going to be. So what I did was I first built a quick list of basically the four places that he thinks solar makes a lot of sense in. And I'm gonna put them up on the screen right now. And so you can see how close I am. All of these places have between a 1.5 and a 1.7 times ratio between the DC system size and what your annual kilowatt hour production is. So this is for a 10 kilowatt system in California. And as you can see, you're gonna produce a little over 16,000 kilowatt hours a year. If you're in Phoenix, obviously you're gonna get a little bit more. You're gonna get over 17,000. If you're in you know, Denver or somewhere like that, you're gonna be in the 15,000 figure. But then he says, you need, like I just previously stated, four to five times more panels if you're in somewhere like you know, New York or Toronto or Chicago. And that's simply not true because if we look at this list, which are the bad places for solar, you can see that you're still at a 1.2 or even a 1.3 times ratio. So I, I don't know if he just kind of quickly put some figures together or if someone told him um, that this is right and then he didn't go and double check it. But at the end of the day, you're really only dealing with maybe like a 25 to 30% drop. Now, of course, would it be nice to get 16,000 kilowatt hours out of a 10 kilowatt system in New York? Sure, but it's not like you're only getting 4,000 kilowatt hours a year, which is how the math would be if he were right, um, you know, for a 10 kilowatt system. You're you're still over 12,000 kilowatt hours a year. So this whole idea that you need four or five times the panels in somewhere like New York or Chicago is just absolutely inaccurate. Um, I've designed systems in these states and these numbers ring very true to what the Onreal uh, solar calculator is saying. Even when he's talking about the difference between like Chicago versus Toronto, for example, he says that in Chicago, you would need about four times the panels versus Denver. And in Toronto, you would need about five times the panels versus Denver, which as you can see from these numbers are also not, not even that large of a difference in reality. Um, so once again, please double check all of these figures. Like I said, Peter Zihan, he's a really smart guy when it comes to geopolitics and stuff, but I just fear that maybe he put this video together a little too quickly and like I said, I just don't want hundreds of thousands or millions of people 
watching the, this video and then concluding that, oh, solar doesn't make sense because when we help people in places like Chicago or New York, they literally see payback periods as short as five, six, seven years if their roof is somewhat in the direction of south without you know some giant trees or something. Another point that he talks about, which I think is not a very good insight, is he talks about how like if you're in New York, for example, you know, where are you gonna put the panels? Like I think he's literally talking about like if you're in Manhattan where you know it's just a bunch of skyscrapers and if you live there, maybe you're in like a condo on the 34th floor and you don't really have any roof space. But in reality, most people live in single family homes in suburbs outside of cities. And so this whole idea of like there's nowhere to put the panels is also kind of a silly argument because yeah, sure, if you're in a condo in Manhattan, yeah, maybe solar isn't gonna really make a lot of sense because you don't have a roof to put it on. But if you're in a single family home, five miles outside of the city, then that whole argument just goes down the drain because you have your own roof still, which is the majority of people, so. Cities by their very definition are densely populated. Solar, by its very nature, has to be distributed. So yes, if you live in a traditional single-family neighborhood with homes with sizable roof lines and a lot of south-facing frontage, you may, may be able to have a decent solar quotient for your system, especially if you live in the American Southwest or California. But if you live in a mid-rise, much less a high-rise, much less in a canyonated city like Chicago or New York, there's nowhere to put the panels in the first place you're gonna to have to put them outside of the city and now you're talking about transmission costs and if you're in new york you're not going to put them outside of the city of you new york because that's equally cloudy you're gonna to have to go down to like central virginia and then there's a half a dozen major cities between you and where you're going to be pulling your power from if you need any help going solar especially in one of these states please reach out i have local consultants all over the country and i'm here to help you out basically so please don't hesitate to call me if you are looking at solar and want some accurate information without being you know jerked around by all these door knocking guys i was out here by myself i got a dog that's blocking me okay no i'm okay i should not okay okay yeah okay okay no you're you're ahead you're ahead 